Okay, so here's a little background on your gear design. This is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be uh, creating uh, some spur gears. Uh, so these come in pairs. So you have a pinion gear and you have your gear wheel. And we're going to be putting that together on a plate. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be starting with uh, some numbers. So I already handed this out in class. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and follow the formulas here. And you want to come up with values for both the pinion gear and the gear wheel. You might want to do this like in Excel or uh, maybe on a different piece of paper. Perhaps uh, the pinion over here and the gear wheel over here. But what you need to do is you need to come up with these values. So I'm going to give you some values here uh, along with this uh, video. Uh, you're going to see some values. I'm going to send that to you by email. But you're going to get three values in here. You're going to get the original gear ratio, the diametral pitch, and then uh, the teeth uh, the, for the pinion gear, you're going to give, uh, get the amount of teeth. So I think for mine it's going to be 24. And for the gear wheel, we're going to use a gear ratio in order to come up with the value for the gear wheel. Gear wheel is much bigger and uh, it's going to be uh, 60 teeth rather than 24. So yeah, so let's take a look at this. So what I did is I put the, these formulas in Excel is exactly what you're going to be getting here. What you want to do before you come to class, not going to have time during class to do this, you want to make sure that this gets done. So let's take a look at Excel and see what we're going to do. What I did is I put all these elements in here. So I got my gear ratio 2.5, which means that uh, the pinion gears are going to have to go around two and a half times for every single revolution of the gear wheel. Diametral pitch is a value that goes between those, so it's a common value between those, and we use that to make calculations between the, you know, the pinion uh, gear and the gear wheel. So the desire here is to be able to have some sort of common value so we can actually, uh, you know, design these together as a pair, as I mentioned. Then uh, we have a 24 teeth uh, on the pinion gear. So what I did is I went out here and I put in some values in here, uh, taking the values out of here, and I created uh, the values for the pinion gear. So the outside diameter, DO, sub 1, 1 meaning 1 for the pinion gear, and 1 being the number of teeth on the pinion gear, 1 referring to pinion, and 2 referring to the wheel if you want to organize it that way. I have an outside diameter of uh, 8.125, then a pitch diameter, which is approximately in the middle. You might want to study up on that and uh, you know, read that sheet and some of the resources on the, the website under student resources. And then uh, we have a, a root diameter of 0.6875. We're looking for four significant digits in these, so you want to make sure you have those. And then we have a pitch point diameter of 0.1875, and uh, we'll go cover that here in just a moment. And uh, you'll also see that when you actually do your designing. So uh, the base diameter is going to be derived through geometry, some uh, sketch geometry that we're going to create. And then you have half, half of the what is called the angular circular pitch. So uh, actually a quarter of that, so it's a quarter of the angular circular pitch. And the circular pitch is one like, you know, anywhere in the tooth, like when one tooth starts and you have a gap between the tooth, and it starts up again. So you have a tooth and then you have a gap. That's, uh, that takes care of the whole thing. If you divide that in half, what you end up getting is a tooth. You divide that into a quarter or half again, which gives you a quarter of the whole. What that gives you is a half a tooth. And the reason that's important is we're going to go ahead and put a line in there right at that value. And we're going to mirror one side of the tooth the other. The sketch elements that define one side of the tooth and mirror it to the other side. And now we're going to have x sub c, which is going to be the difference between or the distance between the center of those two gears. We're going to create a base plate in the background that's going to have that value on it. So then you're going to do the same thing with the gear wheel. Get all these calculations done. And obviously you want the outside diameter. Just to double check your work. It's going to be greater than the, the pitch diameter about in the middle, which is going to be greater than uh, the root diameter. And all these values are, you know, the, the difference between all of these is going to be uh, just about the same. However, however much you have to go up to get to this value, you have to go down to get that value. And just to prove that, that is T6 minus 2 divided by D6. That's T6 plus 2 divided by D6. That's just plain old T6 divided by D6. So you can see the, the relationship between those. Uh, pretty simple formulas. Then the pitch point circle, the diameter, that's got that value there. And then again, the, the quarter angular circular pitch is 1.5 on a gear wheel. Once you get that done, then we're going to, in SolidWorks, we're going to go ahead and model this. So, if we start with the base uh, down here, the base feature, take our rollback bar, roll that back, see what we're going to be doing. 
Uh, this is just going to be the base here, but let's go ahead and go into the sketch and take a look at this. These are all these circles we're going to put together. I have instructions that you're going to follow. So basically what you're going to be doing is you have your outside diameter, the pitch diameter, uh, the base diameter over here, and then uh, the root diameter over here. Uh, the base diameter is going to be derived by sketch model geometry. I mean, this looks like a, like a whole lot of work. And it looks like it's impossible, but you know, just get these uh, di diameter circles in here, outside the pitch uh, diameter, and then a root diameter. And there are just three of those. You got a vertical line over here. You got one with a quarter angular circu circular pitch. So when we get that tooth uh, sketched on one side, we're going to mirror to the other side. So that's pretty easy. Now we have a uh, horizontal line over here. We have a pressure line over here, and then the pressure line will determine where these pitch point circles are. And once we get the second one in here, then we begin to sketch the profile of the tooth. Do that on one side, mirror to the other side, and now we're ready to go ahead and extrude that. So it's pretty simple. It looks complicated, but it's pretty simple. But the tooth there, if we were to go ahead and show that uh, sketch, now you can see the tooth in place. Once you get the tooth in place, I put a little fillet in here. You want to make sure that fillet's uh, pretty small because uh, you might have an interference when you get this together and do an assembly. Then uh, the tooth pattern, however many teeth it takes to go around that thing, and there you have your tooth. So you don't have to do this, but I created a configuration and I did, uh, did one for the gear wheel, which is uh, much bigger. I'm going to go down here and actually click on a different display state. So now that's going to be uh, brown. And uh, you know the very same thing. What sits in the background here is going to be that uh, that sketch. If you take a look at that sketch, uh, very similar things. We have uh, you know the outside diameter, pitch diameter, the base diameter. Now the, or not the base diameter, but the root diameter here. But the base diameter here is now going to be on the inside. And that's okay. And the pinning gear is on the outside. It all depends how big these diameters are. But here are the pitch point circles. Here's a tooth. And then we went ahead and extruded that. Okay, so now that you have your gears made, you're going to have a pinion gear, you're going to have your wheel gear, or gear wheel. Let's put that together on a plate. So we're going to make a back plate. And one thing you'll notice about the, the gears here too is I have some holes in it. We have a center hole in here that we're going to put on a pin on the base plate. And then, then I have a hole over here or you can create a little knob or put something on your gear so you can actually see uh, the gear actually moving around when you're uh, playing with it on the assembly. So let's go ahead and take a look at the base plate. Base plate is nothing fancy. I'm not going to give you any rules in regard to doing this. What you want to do is you want to make sure that these pins are a little bit smaller than the hole that's uh, on the gear. That way you're going to be able to make a concentric mate and you're not going to get any physical dynamic uh, interference there. You're not going to have uh, parts running into each other if you make it just slightly smaller. So these pins are about 0.07 uh, inches and has 0.075 inches for the hole on the gear. You don't have to use that value. All gears are going to be uh, all the gears are going to be a little bit different from one uh, student to another. So just go ahead and uh, create a value and a hole and a pin of the size of your choosing. And the way the base plate looks, however you want to do that, that's fine. So once you get that in place, you want to make sure that uh, in the Excel spreadsheet, you want to make sure that the distance here between these pins is what you derived off your Excel spreadsheet, or however you uh, derive these values. So right over here, mine is x sub c, which is going to be the center to center distance between the gears. Uh, ideally, it's supposed to be 1.3125, but go ahead and round that up. Take that last value in here. Instead of that 2.5, we're going to make that uh, 3. So I'm going to make my 1.313. Go ahead and do that to yours just to make sure it fits. So just round that up a little bit. So let's go back to uh, SolidWorks and let's go ahead and see what it looks like and do an assembly. So here's my base plate. I have my pinion and, and my gear wheel. Design this in such a manner that uh, everything fits. I'm going to make sure you don't have any interference. And let's go ahead and mate these. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that surface and this surface. Go to the mate tab and the, uh, let's go to the green check mark and maybe pull that back in. And let's go ahead and choose this surface here and that surface with the mate toolbar still open. Green check mark, you'll notice that you still have that gap in there, or that we do have that gap. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this surface and that surface. Don't need the control key to press because the properties manager is open. Green check mark. And then that surface and this surface kind of locks that up. 
So now we have our gears in place. We have holes in here so we can actually see uh, how these are going to react to each other. So I'm going to get those holes really uh, close to each other. I'm going to close the Mate uh, Toolbar uh, Properties Manager. And let's go ahead and line this up a little bit. So what you want to do when you start this is you want to make sure your teeth are right there in the middle. And if they're kind of close, between, if you want to make sure that a tooth is within uh, the gap between the other teeth on the other gear, what you want to do is you want to go to move. Stry, try, uh, start with uh, physical dynamics and then begin to turn that. Now since it's already starting colliding, but that's okay, let's see where it's colliding. So you might want to turn that a little bit. When you move that a little bit, you'll notice that faces are going to turn green as you're uh, moving that around. So let's go ahead and look at the bottom down here. So some faces are going to turn green. What you want to do is get in a position here where it's not going to be green. You certainly don't want to see green up here. It'll always be in collision if it is. So once you do that, you can go back to physical dynamics, this radio button over here, and begin to turn it. And once you do that, once you start with no collision, now you can turn your gears. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So remember every two and a half times, pinion gear goes around, here's number two, and here comes the halfway mark. That's your gear ratio. That's what you're going to see. So this is uh, two and a half times down here, and this is one revolution on the top for the gear wheel. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell. Here's our assembly, physical dynamics. When one moves, the other moves. That's what I'm looking for. That's a quarter of your grade. It's a 40-point assignment. So a quarter of your grade is going to be this motion. I want to make sure that that motion works. I want to make sure the distance between the two pins are adequate within uh, where it should be. Remember, if it doesn't, with the, the original value, if, it, if you're getting a lot of interference there, increase it by one significant digit at the very end, and that, that should work. So what, uh, what am I going to grade you on? Well, let's see. Let's uh, take a look at this. I'm going to start over here. I'm going to have a little grade sheet, which is going to be very similar to this. Make sure the model is complete. Looking for movement. That's 10% uh, of our 25%, a quarter of your grade. So we're going to be looking for that physical, dynamic movement. Looking for significant digits. Uh, I want to make sure that you're uh, creating this thing up to uh, four digits after the decimal. And then uh, we're, I'm going to be looking for the proper values for the outside diameter, the pitch diameter, the root diameter, pitch point circles, uh, the drive diameter for the, the, for the base uh, diameter, and then uh, the quarter uh, circular, angular circular pitch. I'm going to be looking for the proper values here. All these things have to be correct in order for your teeth to, to come out right. And then the distance on the base plate, looking for that value over there. So that's for the pinion gear. I'm going to be looking for very similar values on the gear wheel. So, in other words, it's kind of like, um, like getting the mass properties. If it doesn't move at the very end, you did something wrong. You need to go back and double check your work. And check these values first. And once you put your model together, you can save your pinion gear first. And then uh, save that very same model as your gear wheel or wheel gear. Just be careful when you do that. You want to make sure that when you that when you change your values here and you're going from the pinion gear to the gear wheel that you start with the outside diameter first. Redefine that pitch diameter, redefine that second, root diameter, re redefine that third. That way you don't have diameters crossing each other when you're making those changes. And sometimes you're going to have to take off that uh, tangent relationship between the bottom of the tooth, that uh, line that defines the very bottom of the tooth that you'll see in the instructions. You might have to take that off in order to do that. So that's what I'm going to grade you on. It's a 40-point assignment. Good luck on that, and uh, make sure you understand this first. If you have any questions before Friday, give me a holler.